Happy New Now, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with you as always. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here, and we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality. While listening, you'll be exposed to inspiring, empowering, and unifying perspectives that I'm highly confident will yield stellar results in your life if you opt to try them on for size. Also, I'm super, super happy to announce that we have officially launched our new late night style consciousness elevating video variety talk show, Optimistic, which features live visionary artists, soul share interviews, retreat guests that come here to the Mystic Manor uh, to join me and the interviewee on the stage during the the last night of their stay, their week-long stay, uh, as well as the show concluding with live musical performances. We're going to be releasing episodes every other Sunday at 11, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and you can go to optimistic.tv, that's spelled O-P-T-I-M-Y-S-T-I-C dot TV, to join our watch party for each future episode's release or to check out past episodes. We were originally going to be releasing optimistic episodes every Sunday. However, as a community following the flow of what is wanting to come through in these unique and unprecedented times with so many of our soul family stuck at home craving connection, we have decided to move to releasing episodes every other Sunday so that those of us here on the production team at the Mystic Manor can free up some time and energy to help create virtual community for all of you P heads out there. And we are accomplishing that aim by launching our new Mystic Manor online retreat and play shops re-membership program. It's going to entail live play shops twice daily, seven days a week, behind the scenes footage here at the Mystic Manor each day, access to a Facebook group where we do short interactive one minute video challenges and reflect back to each other about our experiences live Q&As with me and some of the other facilitators, and, and more. It's it's a super, super robust program. It's facilitated by over a dozen of us here at the Mystic Manor, and in an effort to support all you pee heads out there stuck at home craving connection for a limited time, it is going to be totally free to sign up on our Patreon page, which is linked at optimistic.tv. Just Be sure to fill out the form uh, link that's located at the top of our About section on Patreon so we can make sure you have access. Otherwise, we're super excited to have you join in all the magic with us that's happening here every single day at the Mystic Manor and to expand our community together. Here we grow. All right, all you positive heads, welcome. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining Samantha and I today as I cannot keep a straight face as she's laughing at me right now as I do the same introduction that I always introduce with, but I can't help it. I love it. It's just how you know it's me, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) Hi, Samantha. I love it. I find it so endearing. I, I definitely cannot stop smiling every time that we get to co host together. This is my one of my favorite times of the week. Me too. It's always so fun to see your beautiful face across from me and to hear your voice and have these fun chats that we have. So I'm looking forward to today because you have a fabulous idea and um, I'm looking forward to getting into this discussion. Thank you. Yeah. A quote that I came across and it struck me like lightning. So I decided to post it on my Instagram. It is what if dot dot dot. Everything that you are going through is preparing you for what you asked for. And this is an interesting quote to come by in the midst of a pandemic where we're all going through our various degrees of breakdown, right? We're going through various degrees as being shaken up and confronting different aspects of ourselves. And we're being forced to slow down in some kind of ways and go within. And it's fascinating I've definitely seen it in myself and with my clients, people saying, you know, Sam, it kind of feels like I manifested this. Like deep down, it kind of feels like this is exactly what I needed. And people really taking this time and opportunity to ask that question, like, well, why did this happen for me? And what is this calling me to look at? 
And one of the things that I keep seeing is people shifting trajectories from what they were doing and how they were operating into deeper alignment with who they really are and what their purpose on this planet is. Mm, that is so beautiful. So if we think about the bigger picture of what's going on here, what my opinion is of the bigger picture, is that we're moving into this new earth. And in order for us to do that, we do need to be in alignment with our inner being, with our true purpose. We need to be following our passions, following our heart. And did we need a little push? Maybe. Maybe we did. You know, this was like an opportunity, this last opportunity, like the train's leaving. Are you getting on board type of thing? So this is really providing so many of us an opportunity to open our eyes and see what's important in life and, and what matters. Yeah. And, you know, I do not like to fear monger at all. And I feel that for those of us that are hoping and wishing that life's just going to go back to normal, how it was, I really don't believe that it is like we are deep diving into a recession that could be a depression and business is going to change. Work is going to change. Life is going to change. Travel is going to change. Public gatherings are going to change. And, you know, this is a good time to reevaluate, right? Like what, what does the world need and what is going to be emerging? And will my skill set or will my work still be relevant? Or do I need to shift and pivot, you know? And, and was the way I was working, was that even fulfilling for me? Was that nourishing me? Was that meeting my soul's desires and needs? Or am I being asked to really go deep into the core of my being and, and to, to seek a, a different truth, a, a, a very different reality that, that maybe was kind of poking or whispering or gently yelling from within that we maybe weren't looking at before? Totally. And I think that that's true on a personal level for everyone and also on a worldly level. Like to go back to the same thing that we had before, I, I want to see some change. Things haven't, haven't been amazing. We need to see some change. And while I don't love going through all of this and I, you know, I certainly don't want to see people losing loved ones and just being in fear and grief and all that. Nobody wants to see any of that. Um, but I feel like times like this, it's what's needed in order to push us into a new, a new way of being. And so I think there's going to be so much positive out of this. But yeah, we definitely need to buckle up for this ride because it's going to be different and maybe unsettling for many. Yeah. Lightworkers, this is our, this is our time to really do our work you know, shining our light and making sure that that is what we're emitting because there's no time for anything else right now. And speaking of manifesting, we can choose the way we want our life to project at this time. However we see it is what we're going to live. So, so important to use that power of our mind and our will to focus our intentions in that direction that we want to be in. Absolutely. And with the power of manifestation, I find is, is it's so important to be intentional about our language. Right. And so even, mm -hmm. you know, I used to find myself saying, Oh, well, I don't know what I really want. I don't know what I'm really here for. I don't know what I've. And every time I would say that, that's what would be programmed into my reality, into my being. And so before I even knew, before I was even clear, I would recite to myself and I still recite this to myself. I know who I am. I know what I want. I know why I'm here. I know how I serve. I know how I feel. I trust myself, right? And each time I say that, my body starts to respond to that. And then the messages come through and it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And then the universe reflects that to me. Mm, I love that because you do know, every one of us, all of you, you know, inside, you know, you know all of the answers. Keep reaffirming that to yourself. And that's what happens. They just, those messages flow in that knowingness is there because you've affirmed it to yourself that you know. Yeah, we have so much power within us. And that's one of the things <clears throat> that has been, that is going to change in the world. This awareness of our power that is within us. That is the thing that has been kept a secret and hidden 
and, you know, controlled in this world for so long. And that's one of the things that's changing. And that's one of the things I'm super excited about. This awareness, we're all getting it. The power is in me. Absolutely. And back to belief again, you know, I, I work with a lot of coaches, uh, helping them build their businesses and gain clients and put themselves out there. And quite a few people thought, well, well, I can't, I can't make money right now. I can't sell my services right now. I can't run my programs right now. We're in a recession. And I said, now is the exact time that you need to put out your programs and your services because people need them more than ever. And as soon as you adopt that belief, wow, thousands of dollars coming in more and more clients than you could have imagined when you just believe it and you trust that, right? Because again, our beliefs and our thoughts and our words can literally prevent us, block us, hold us back from putting ourselves out there and, and having the life and the business that we, we truly desire. And so again, it's so important to come into alignment with what you desire, what you believe, having that faith, having that burning desire, and then taking consistent aligned action is so important. So for anyone listening that has a dream to maybe build their own business or to become a healer or to create a new product line or whatever it might be, you know, whatever it might be to even change industries, you just need to tap in and say, what do I want? Why is this important for me? Can I have, can I have unwavering faith that success is inevitable for me? And then what are the steps that I need to take? If you don't know the steps, hire somebody to teach you. Find somebody who's doing it and get them to mentor you, but just do it, like right? Just take imperfect action. It's so important to really claim your dreams. Totally. Back to that quote at the very beginning that you were talking about, what is it that you're asking for? We can ask for absolutely anything. We have this infinite sea of possibility. So it's out there. We get to decide. It's whatever we believe. And when this is another place where we can choose to not live in fear. If we just choose to follow our passions, let go of all those fears. It's the fear that keeps us back from doing what we truly want to do. It's fear in one way or another. It's doubt. It's unworthiness, right? It's shame. It's whatever it may be. Somebody's not going to accept it. Who knows, right? It's fear. Let all that go and just do you. Just do you. I think that's such a big point that a lot of us are getting at this time too. It's like, just be your authentic self, come from your heart, and everything will work out just fine when you follow your purpose like that. It just, that's the universal laws. It's very simple. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's a huge pain point for a lot of people, the, the question of purpose, because they feel like they don't know. Uh, so hmm. I just, I actually, I've seen this a lot over the last 13 years working. I'm sure you have too. And so I actually put together a workbook called, uh, your alchemist journey. And it's this free workbook that asks just a bunch of questions and it helps you introspect and get clear on your story and why you're here and what, what bothers you about the world and what inspires you and what you want to do. And so if anyone is kind of feeling stuck with what their purpose is and wants this free workbook, all you need to do is go to my website, samanthalotus.com forward slash alchemist hyphen journey. We'll link that in the comments and, and you can download the workbook and ask yourself, like take the time to ask yourself these questions and introspect. And throughout the journey, you'll probably gain a lot of clarity on who you are, what you want, and then what the next steps are. That's awesome. I love that. Thank you for offering that, Samantha. You know, it's interesting. This what is my purpose question is one of the main questions that comes up in a QHHT session. Pretty much everyone has the question, what is my purpose? So that should tell everyone listening, like, don't feel alone if you don't know what your purpose is, because not many people really, truly do on the surface. Everyone knows inside. Everybody. What are some of the answers that people have gotten in your sessions? I love that. Um, the main answer is in general, you are here to help. So you are here to help in whatever way that is your flavor, right? So whatever it is that you do, that's how you're helping people. So some people, another big answer is your purpose is to just be, you don't have to do anything. You came here to be this energy to radiate your love and light. That's it. So don't think you have to do much. All you need to do is be. Yeah. Making people happy and just being are the two main answers. So my question from the skeptic mind is, well, then how do people take care of themselves if they if their purpose is just to be like what 
you know, if somebody gets that answer, I'm meant to just be, well, it's like, well, how do I pay my bills? What do I do with life? Right. So the person that gets that answer of just needing to be is the person who thinks that they have to constantly be doing, doing, doing. Not that they're not working or making a living, you know, because they are, they're serving their purpose out in the world, but they feel like they need to do more. And so they're told, just be, you do you, you keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Not sit on your ass and not do anything. (laughs) And if that is your calling, maybe, maybe it is. And that's just, for me, I guess I would imagine that just to be meditation and um, constantly radiating that, that energy out. So that's for the monks. I stayed, I did a a temple stay when I was living in Korea with at a Buddhist temple for three nights, four days. And it was the most intense thing I've ever done. When people think like, oh, monks just sit and meditate all day. That's not true. First of all, Mm -mm, they do a ton of work. (laughs) They're up at the crack of dawn. They bow hundreds of times a day. They, They tend to the garden. They do all sorts of things. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah, it's, it's interesting for me when I was there, I really, I really saw that there are all flavors, like anything that you want, any kind of life you want, you can have, you can create, it is out there, right? Mm -hmm. There are people that literally like build rockets to go to different planets. There are people that pick flowers and plant seeds for a living. There are like that people that make artificial intelligence robots, there's everything, every permutation. Mm -hmm. And so it's really fun to ask yourself, well, what role do you have? And where do you fit into this magnificent tapestry? And what would bring you the most joy and fulfillment? That's the thing. What makes you happy? Whatever that is, that's what you do. Because when you do what makes you happy, you never work a day in your life. You just don't. It doesn't feel like work. Yeah. People always ask me, they're like, okay, so how many hours a week do you work? And I'm like, well, between five and a hundred and something, (laughs) consider work, you know, I mean, I go to gatherings and I host gatherings. That's work. I I have phone calls with people. That's work. I put videos on YouTube. I guess that's work. It's, you know, it's, it it really is one and the same. It's, yeah. and, And I feel like there's so much fulfillment. You know, I, a lot of, I see a lot of people that are extremely in dissonance with themselves because they have their real life or their like real personality, but then they have their work life and it's so separate and it feels so disjointed and disconnected. And some people are fine with that, but some people have a huge pain with that. And I know for, for myself, when I made the decision that I was going to be a absolutely 100% myself in every situation, in every circumstance, and there would be no disconnection between myself, whew, everything just like psh, came into such alignment. And then it started flourishing because I was happy because I finally felt like I could truly be myself and be in my power, in my purpose. Oh, I love that. That's such a good point. And I think I could take a lesson from that because I feel like I definitely separate all the different aspects of my work, you know, and in, in one way I'll, I'll, I'll speak one way and in in another aspect, I'll speak another way, you know, and it does leave me a little, you know, separated inside a little bit. Like I have all these different personalities kind of right of like when I'm doing this job, I'm this way, but Sounds so much better to just put it all together. I started life coaching when I was 18 years old. And I have no clue how people hired an 18-year-old as a life coach. It makes no sense to me now. <laughs> My first clients were, there were two there were two separate women. They were 55 and 57. And they were managers of the gym that I worked at. And they were my clients. And I, I remember just like thinking, wow, this is, this is, this is so fascinating. And um. And I really tried to be super professional. You know, I wore my blazer and I had my little briefcase and I showed up and I was, I was really acting the part, speaking in professional jargon. And, and I, I went through that for quite, quite a few years. And then, uh, and then I started to really suffer, realizing like that doesn't really feel true to me. And this other side feels really true to me. And then I didn't know what I could post on social media and how I could be and who I would show up with. And, and then again, I made that decision. And then I started teaching at the Institute of Holistic Nutrition. I was a professor there and I showed up fully as myself, my wild personality, my irreverence. I would swear in class sometimes. And the students loved me. I, I feel like that, that cohort of students got the best results because they were engaged. They felt I was a real person. They could really connect with me. 
And I see that over and over with everyone that I coach is as they fully claim who they are, they also give permission to other people to fully claim themselves as well. Totally. I love that. Yeah. And I also feel like when we're not doing that, when we're not completely being authentic in all the ways in all of our places, right? This is where our higher self comes in and smacks us around a little bit to put us back in our place. So that's when life can get a little difficult, right? Like just challenges and challenges because we need to get right. We need to get back in balance. Totally. You know, something else that I was thinking when you said that was that there's this societal pressure. I, well, I imagine, and I believe it's true that there's a societal pressure to in business be both masculine and professional, right? Like you have to look the part, you have to speak the part. You can't really bring emotions or personality or fun or flavor because you need to be robotic and professional. Mm -hmm. So people take you seriously so that they have the, you know, the authority effect. And this is huge in medicine. Totally. I was just going to say it. It's exactly true in my doctor world. Yep. That's exactly where I see it. And patience, because I'm not that way. Um, I, they definitely get <clears throat> more of the easygoing light me um, and they love it. It's like, oh, thank you for not being so military about this process with me and smiling at me and, you know, just talking to me like a regular person. And half the time I'm like, they're like, what's your name? I'm like, just Erica. It's Erica. <laughs> I love that. And, and there, yeah. I can't remember what studies it was, but there was a really large study that was conducted on um, patient relationship and, uh, and personalism. So how mm. personable the doctor was actually exponentially increased the, the positive results of the patient because they felt they were cared for and they felt yeah. that sense of love and warmth and support. And that on an energetic level, on a biophysiological level, that does decrease the stress hormones. It allows the body to breathe. It allows the body to rest and rejuvenate and repair itself. And it directly has, I believe, energetic, metaphysical, and like actual chemical reactions that promote healing. And absolutely. Yeah. It, going through school, we're, we're taught, you know, I went through psychology, which I was going to become a psychiatrist. We were taught like that you need to remain distant, cold, objective, no patient relationships, professional. And I was like, well, that's why people don't get results in that industry. Right. Right. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. And people can feel your intentions. So when you're sitting there with them with this intention of, I want you to be well, I just, I want you to be happy and well, and I want to help you do that. They can feel that. And sometimes that's just enough, really. Just to know that somebody cares, like you said, and, and listens. That's the biggest thing, just to listen. So many of us aren't being heard and don't have someone to listen to us. So just to have a few minutes where someone is giving you their undivided attention is very healing. It's, it's so true, you know, and this mm -hmm. kind of comes back to that, the, the, the theme of this conversation about people being in their purpose. Like you said, most people want to help and they feel like, well, yeah. I'm not a doctor and I'm not a this and I don't have 48 certifications. So all of that is garbage. You, if exactly. you show up for somebody and you hold space for them and you listen mm -hmm. to them, you really listen, you, you, you have compassion for them and you just tell them, Hey, you know what? It's going to be okay. And what are some steps that we can take? What are some tools that we can use and just holding them and keeping them accountable to their well being, even in the simplest of ways, they will have massive transformation and they will thank you for doing that. And so for anyone out there, that's like, that's considering going into the healing arts or that wants to be somebody that helps others, just know that you're probably making it way more complicated in your mind than it actually is. Totally. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And that goes back to that point of just being. So if you're someone whose friends call them and you're that ear, that's, that's how you are serving your purpose. You're just being, being you and you're helping all of those people by just listening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I tell you what, that's probably like 99% of what I do <laughs> is, is listen. It's, it, it really is the most beneficial thing to just be heard. It's counseling. Counseling really is, oh, you just sit there and listen. It's so nice for people. It's like, they just feel like just being heard 
feels like a whole three hour counseling session. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And then the mm-hmm. other part is, so I like to listen. However, I'm a bit more, less counselor, more coach. I like telling people <laughs> what to do. And I think people really need that too. You know, sometimes yeah, when you're lost, sometimes. Confused, it's like, just tell me what to do. And so as well, you know, for anybody wanting to get in the industry, if you have done something, you've accomplished anything in your life, you can literally turn around and teach other people how to do that. Whether that's build a successful garden, raise a child to that, that isn't awful, you know, whether it's yes. lose 15 pounds, whether it's come off chemical mm-hmm. medications, whether it's healing your acne, whatever you have succeeded in, you can turn around and tell people how to do it. And it's pretty simple. Like, I mean, yes, there's a strategy and yes, there are systems that you need to learn. However, like you are an expert at something and people are probably waiting for you to teach them how to do that same thing. Totally. I love that. And that again, goes back to what do you love? What do you love to do? You know how to do something amazing and you're better at it than anybody else. And you know all this stuff about it. So do that, right? Do that. Teach that. Follow that passion. And life just opens up. Everything opens up for us. The universe will just continue to provide because you're supposed to be doing this. This is why you came here. (laughs) When you're following your purpose, everything, it's like this golden pathway just opens up in front of you. That made me think, I don't know why, but my mind went off on a tangent. Some people ask me, like, if you had to change your life trajectory completely and do something kind of ridiculous, what would you do? I feel like I would I would be a professional hugger. Like, I would just hold, like, <laughs> hug parties in Japan or in places where they're so deprived of social interaction and just, just <laughs> hold people and help them feel loved and connected and then create connection parties. And that, that's what I would do. I'm going to do it. Erica, I'm going to... I love it. I watched this documentary called Loveless in Japan, and it broke my heart at just how mm. disconnected they are and how it, it's... Anyways, I'm going to I'm gonna create a love party. After our retreat and the borders are open, my next venture is going to Japan and starting a hug campaign to I love bring it, mental Samantha. health and emotional well-being to Asia. <laughs> Samantha, I think that you could just stand on the street corner anywhere in Japan with a shirt that says free hugs and you will be bombarded. <laughs> you will stick out like a sore thumb <laughs> and that, that could work out really well. Free hug and picture. Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That would be great. I love that idea of spreading more love around. You know, if I had to pick a different trajectory in this life, I would, wow, I would probably travel the world like with my backpack and live in forest. I would go from forest to forest and and just live in the woods. I did that. <laughs> I would live that way though, I think. I don't think I'd ever get sick of it and just live off the land and with Mother Nature and oh, that I just got sounds sick amazing. Of it. I love cities. I love people. <laughs> I love variety. I need it all. I need it all. But yeah. living in the jungle in Costa Rica for, you know, a good amount of time was amazing. I definitely recommend it. Mm-hmm. Mm, sounds good to me. Maybe we'll do a <laughs> retreat there. Maybe we need like a maybe we need to expand our horizons and do it in the midst of a forest. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. I think we'll we'll put our heads together and see. We have so many ideas. I know. I think we definitely need trees and water. Yeah. Yeah. I have a we'll few places out. in mind. The yeah, wheels good. are turning. The wheels are turning, positive heads. We are so masterminding and hearting this retreat for you. <laughs> I'm loving it. Yeah, we're going to put together something amazing. Good. Well, thank you so much for today. This is so much fun. Yeah, this has been such a fun chat. And I will see you again next week. I love you so much. We're going <laughs> to we're going to leave you with a song for today everybody. This is Rising Appalachia Medicine. Until next time. Love you all. Love you. Mwah. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week retreat style mystic manor immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the mystic manor.
brushing is violence And so is your silence when it's rooted in compliance To stand firm in loving defiance Make art your alliance, give voice to the fire Move people to the beat of the wind Gather yourself and begin to dance the song until it ends We are winners, champions of the light Forming in numbers and might Keep the truth close in sight Medicine and woman Medicine man Walk in with grace I know your face And I trust your hands Medicine woman Medicine man Walk in with grace I know your face And I trust your hands Find your teachers in the voice of the forest Some plug you can't ignore this Wisdom of the voiceless Remedies are bountiful and surround us From the garden to the farthest Pray you're made of stardust Find your healing in the music that calls you The voice that enthralls you What do you belong to? Eyes out, there's the setting of the sun Give thanks to each and every one The lesson is the medicine woman Medicine man with grace, I know your face and I trust your hands. Medicine woman, medicine man. Walk in with grace, I know your face and I trust your hands. To the messages and actions The art is beating Stop stuck to disbelieving Cause the garden holds the shards The medicine is in the seeds When we hold tight to our right to protect And we know our might is tenfold in connection Our elders hold them bright lights We protect them The medicine is evident The wolf, the hawk, the bear clan We hold tight to our right to protect And we know our might is tenfold in connection our elders hold them bright lights, we protect them. The medicine is evidence, the wolf, the hawk, the medicine woman. Medicine man, walk in with grace, I know your face, and I trust your hands. Medicine woman, medicine man, walk in with grace, I know your face, and I trust your hands. 